A pastor was approached by a young man who asked, What must I do to be saved? He replied, It's too late. The young man was very alarmed and asked, Do you mean it's too late for me to be saved? Is there nothing that I can do? The pastor replied, Too late. It's already been done. It is finished. The only thing you can do is believe. I read this quote. Jesus did a job that we couldn't do for ourselves. We couldn't save ourselves. We can't keep ourselves saved. We don't owe God anything. Absolutely nothing. We never did. God was never banking on us to make up for our failures and our faults and our sins. God took care of those long before we ever realized. Isn't that the truth? Isn't that the truth of what today is all about? And all we can do in response to that truth is first believe it to be true. And second, respond with gratitude and with thanksgiving. To tell us that. To tell us that. Hear that. And don't just hear it with your ears, but hear it into the depths of your soul. Talatasai. To tell us that. One of the last words of Jesus recorded by John, just before he breathed his last and died. To tell us that. It is finished. It is paid in full. And what a gift those words are that free us and announce the promise of our forgiveness. Announces the gift of God's grace, God's love, and God's mercy. Because God gave us Jesus, ultimately for the moment of today, to die on the cross of Good Friday to ensure us of God's promise of eternal life. To tell us that. Remember the Gospel writer John was writing after the resurrection, post-resurrection, as the early church was being formed to share with them the story of faith, to recount the life, the ministry, the death, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. But he needed to speak in the language of the people and he needed to use words and images that they would be able to identify with. Tatalastai. He used a word in the Greek that people of his time would understand because it was a word they used regularly in many and different social contexts. And they could so easily interchange that into a spiritual context as John shared the last words of Jesus from the cross. They could comprehend fully what Jesus had done when he died on his cross. A servant, when they had completed a job that had been given to them to do, would say to the master, to tell us that I've overcome all the difficulties I've done the job to the best of my ability, and it is finished. The Jewish people went to the temple with a sacrifice, and the high priest would examine what was brought, and although most likely they didn't speak Greek, they would use the Hebrew equivalent of telelestai, tel meaning your offering is accepted. It is perfect. A merchant at the marketplace made a sale and money was handed over, would say, Talalastai, tel the deal is finished, it is complete, the price is paid in full, I'm satisfied. An artist, when they finished a painting or a sculpture, would stand back and say, 
to tell us that. It is finished. There is nothing more that can be done to make this piece of art any better. This painting is complete. A boy would recite to his father a difficult passage that he learned from scripture, or a girl would show her mother a loaf of bread she had baked for her family, and would say, tell Elisai. And the parents would respond with, well done, my child. I am very proud of you. To tell us that. When Jesus died on that cross, he bore our griefs. Jesus carried our sorrows. He was wounded for our transgressions. Jesus was bruised for our iniquities. Jesus was chastised for our peace. Jesus was scourged for our healing. And so when he cries out, Telestai, he is proclaiming, it is finished. I have come to the end of what I came to this earth as a human being to do. I have brought to completion the task that God sent me here to do. I have accomplished what I came to fulfill. I have done exactly what you asked of me. Mission accomplished. A Roman citizen, when they were convicted of a crime, they were thrown into prison. And a certificate of debt listing all of their crimes was nailed to the cell door. So that anyone passing by would know what they had been accused of, found guilty of, and the penalty the judge had assessed. When the prisoner had served their sentence, they were released from bondage. They were set free. And the indictment was taken down from the door. And the judge who had put them in prison would sign the indictment and write across it the word to tell us that. And that free prisoner would be given the document to carry with them. So that when they were questioned as to why they were out of jail, they could point to the indictment across which the judge had written, to Talestan. And they could rest in the safety and in the security because that word, to Talestan, guaranteed their deliverance and their liberty. The charges for those crimes would never be brought against them again. Never would they become the big victim of double jeopardy having to pay for the same crime twice. When Jesus cried, Talalestai, on the cross, he was saying that when we trust in his sacrificial death, we receive our certificate of debt with the inscription, Talalestai, meaning our crimes, our sins against God, past, present, and future. They are paid for in full. They are written off. Paul proclaimed to the early church that because our debt was paid in full by Jesus, God has forgiven our sins. Christ has utterly wiped them out, completely obliterated them. The condemning evidence of our human sin which hangs over our heads is completely annulled by his hanging on the cross and his death upon the cross. John wrote these words about Jesus too. God so loved the world that he gave his only son that, so that those who believe in him may not perish but have eternal life. God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world might be saved through him. And again John in one of his letters wrote if anyone does sin we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins. And not for our own, but also for the sins of the whole world. Today, standing at the foot of the cross ourselves, witnessing all that this day meant for Jesus and remembering everything that this day means for us too, the same truths are the ones that we need to hold on to. 
And if we're consumed with grief, remember Jesus bore our grief. And if we are overwhelmed with sorrow, remember Jesus carried our sorrow. And if we are trapped in a life of transgression, remember Jesus was wounded for our transgressions. And if we are living in sin, remember that we can be forgiven because Jesus was bruised for our iniquities. And if we are tempted and have no peace, and if we are tormented and have no peace, remember Jesus was chastised for our peace. And if we are physically, emotionally, or spiritually sick, remember Jesus was wounded for our healing. Today, hear Jesus say, to tell us God. And know that he's referring to each one of us as he says it. And the weight and the sin and the death we experience in our lives, he has borne it all for us on that cross of Good Friday. That's what makes today good. Not the injustice, not the mocking or the scourging, not that an innocent man died, but that Jesus did it all for us, for you, and for me. And what a profound gift that is. What a profound truth to hold on to. Today, think about what Jesus accomplished on the cross for each and every one of us. And even though we may think we don't deserve it, or we might think that others don't deserve it. God thinks otherwise. Look at the lengths that God went to to show us. For a moment, just let that sink in. Really internalize that message that is holy and sacred on this holy and sacred day. Jesus died for you. Just think of it. And if you or a loved one is carrying a burden, whatever burden that may be, take it to the cross of Jesus Christ. And remember that Jesus has already taken on that burden with you, and he's taken on that burden for you. And through him we will experience the truest healing, the truest wholeness, the truest peace that we long for. Tatalistan. It is finished. Thanks be to God.